right. So, I'll try to keep that mic away. It's dangerous to me. I have had the opportunity to visit Queen's Park on several occasions. Uh, I've seen firsthand Minister Wynne's commitment and dedication to serving not only her constituents, but this province of Ontario. With that said, it's no surprise uh, what, she's, what she's accomplished in the faith that her colleagues and the Premier, or the Premier have in her abilities to get the job done. Needless to say, uh, it was my privilege to have the opportunity to introduce you this evening, uh, and I understand that uh, Kathy was you who so graciously allowed me to do that, so thank you to you as well. So, without any further ado, I'd like to tell you about Minister Kathleen Wynne. Kathleen Wynne was first elected to the Ontario Legislature in 2003. She was re-elected in 2007 and in 2011 as the MPP for Don Valley West. On October 20th, 2011, Kathleen was appointed Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing and Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. She's previously served as Minister of Transportation from 2010 to 2011 and Minister of Education from 2006 to 2010. As the Minister of Education, Kathleen led the government's efforts to reduce class sizes in primary grades and to implement full-day kindergarten. On that note, I have a four-year-old that would like to speak with you at home. <laughs> Obviously, this will provide more opportunities for high school students to graduate and to reach their full potential. Before the Premier asked her to serve as Minister, she was appointed as Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities, Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Education, Chair of the Cabinet Committee on, the Commun on Community Affairs Policy, and Chair of the Liberal Women's Caucus. Kathleen holds a Master's Degree in Linguistics from the University of Toronto, and a Master's Degree in Adult Education from the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. She also completed uh, mediation training at Harvard University. Building on a lifetime of political activity and a career of public service, Kathleen is knowledgeable and, passion and a passionate advocate for her community of Don Valley West. She's led citizens groups in a number of grassroots community projects and has played a major role as an organizer and facilitator. She was formerly a public school trustee in Toronto, and all of this has led to a results-based approach to life, government, and community. Kathleen has three children, Chris, Jesse, and Maggie, and two granddaughters, Olivia and Claire. Kathleen and her partner, Jane, have lived in North Toronto for more than 25 years. Minister Wynn. Thank you so much, Brian, and uh, thank you very much, Tim, and thank you very much to uh, Gary and Donna, and I know that um, Regional Chair uh, Anderson, you really wanted me to be here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I know he wanted to see me tonight, so I, uh, I moved heaven and earth to be here. Um, and I just want to preface my remarks by saying I am very happy to be here. I am very happy to have the opportunity to engage with you uh, in another um, portfolio to be able to have a conversation with you, an ongoing conversation with you. We have had a number of conversations about transportation, and I remember those well. And um, we will continue those. And, uh, you know, I think that whenever there is change and growth and uh, wherever there are good things happening, there are going to be a variety of opinions. So um, that, that uh, mediation training that I took at Harvard prepared me for politics, I just have to say, <laughs> because there are always lots of issues. So it is wonderful to be here. I have to say the only time I've ever been here in this building before is when it's been really warm outside, it's golf. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of having a surreal, where's the golf course? Um, but I, uh, I want to I congratulate uh, Gary, particularly as the new president of this organization. Where did you go? You're right there. Okay. Um, and you've got even a better name for jokes. I mean, win is good for politics, but strange. I'm sure you have. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, and uh, Donna, for your work. Thank you very much. And uh, you're like all the uh, retired teachers that I know, the big smile on their face, right? <laughs> Um, 
At the province, as you know, uh, we're working hard to support independent businesses like yours across Ontario. Uh, we, uh, you might have noted last Tuesday, the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses released its annual red tape um, report card and gave Ontario a B minus on eliminating uh, red tape. That's not perfect, but it's better than the C minus that uh, that we had gotten a year earlier. So there are improvements. That grade represents the work that we've done to eliminate more than 80,000 regulatory requirements. And at Municipal Affairs and Housing alone, we eliminated 9,908 regulatory burdens between January 1st, 2009 and March 31st, 2011. So the point of that is that we are aware that government sometimes gets in the way and we are doing what we can to, uh, to remove regulatory burdens while at the same time having responsible public policy in place. It's no secret that we're in a challenging time here in Ontario and around the world. Now, you only have to listen to the conversation that's going on among the, the uh, leaders in Davos to know that the, some of the certainty that we have taken for granted for decades um, is shifting. And our government's response has been to focus on jobs and the economy and getting our fiscal house in order, which includes working to establish a better environment for the business sector. And I, I also want to congratulate the region of Durham for its strong business sense in these challenging times. Durham recently received, as you will know, a reconfirmation of its AAA credit rating. Bravo for that. It's wonderful. eight municipalities in Canada to receive that rating from Moody's Investor Services. So you're doing a lot right. Thank you for that. Minding the store and making hard-nosed business decisions is, of course, very, very important. But at the same time, our government will not forget those who are less well-off, and that is the challenge for, uh, for government. Uh, for example, here in Ajax, the Ajax Municipal Housing Corporation completed Hubbard Station in November 2010. Um, and that's an 84 unit affordable housing project built with $3.5 million of provincial funding and $2.2 million of federal funding. That green energy building is a good example of what can be accomplished when all three levels of government work together. And I think that is the best that we can do is to expect that all three levels of government will work together. So to continue that type of work, Last November, I was pleased to participate in the announcement of a new uh, four-year investment in affordable housing with the federal government. That agreement will have far-reaching benefits all across the province, and it will, it will benefit people who need affordable housing, but it will benefit people who don't necessarily need affordable housing, but we all need to live in communities where uh, people have access to what they need. We'll also create jobs. More than 5,000 jobs will be created over the term of this program, so communities overall will benefit, and we'll be able to build or repair 7,000 units of affordable housing um, in Ontario over four years. In addition, small businesses across the province will benefit from the, the home building activity and the repair activity. Durham Region's allocation of that new uh, money is uh, about $14.9 million over four years. And um, that whole investment in affordable housing is part of our long-term affordable housing strategy. And that strategy is designed to give municipalities more flexibility than they've had in the past uh, in how they decide to provide affordable housing in their municipalities, because obviously the needs are different depending on where you are in the province. Durham is an area that's growing. Um, there are many parts of the province with uh, very different needs. So for example, um, we uh, no longer are they told, no longer municipalities told they have to spend on new housing and on rent supplements. I mean, municipalities are now given affordable housing funding and have more discretion on how best to use it. Um, I'm a firm believer that when we get people into those safe, affordable housing uh, units, we're helping entire communities. People who have decent housing are healthier, both physically and mentally. Children who have safe homes do better at school and go on to more fruitful lives and, uh, and uh, fruitful careers. And their communities, as, as I said, become places that people can take pride in. So from my perspective, community building is a priority for my ministry, it's a priority for this government. And we envision those strong, viable, sustainable communities all over the, all over the province. On that subject, 
Most of you are likely aware that yesterday I declared a uh, provincial interest in the Seton, Ontario Municipal Board hearings. I also declared my intent to amend the Central Pickering Development Plan in a number of areas. Some of the plan's goals are a community with high quality employment opportunities, neighborhoods that have minimal impact on the environment, natural open spaces with parks and trails that support healthy walkable communities, and a range of transportation options, including public transit, and finally, permanent protection of the Duffins Rouge Agricultural Preserve for agriculture and conservation uses. Um, I know that uh, some of you are wondering about the Durham Regional Official Plan Amendment, and because that matter is before the OMB, uh, we're still a uh, party in that process. Um, if I go back to what I said originally, our government has been steadily implementing a long-term vision for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, one that drives economic growth, job creation, healthy communities, and environmental protection. And it means future new business opportunities, new customers, and more investment opportunities. And that's, a good, that's good news for the people in this room, for the members of the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade. Um, I would also like to just say that I think we're involved in a culture shift. Now, those of you who knew me or heard me speak when I was the Minister of Transportation heard me talk about a culture shift. You will know that I grew up outside of Toronto. I grew up in Richmond Hill. And I know that the way we think about the availability of clean water and land and clean air has changed over the last 58 years since I've been on the planet. And so we are, we're engaged in a culture shift. There were no buses in Richmond Hill when I was growing up. There was only uh, the opportunity to have one car, two car, three car families, and we got in our cars and we went to wherever we were going. Um, the, the single most uh, frequent request I get from people living in the GTA outside of the, uh, the former city of Toronto, the, the old city of Toronto, is when are we going to get more transit? When are we going to be able to get out of our car? We want to do it, but it's just too inconvenient. So the whole thrust of planned growth and sustainable communities that we're involved in, integrated transportation planning, is part of that culture shift. So although um, I've worked with you on transportation and now I'm working with you on municipal affairs, those things are very much connected. And so uh, I think that the kind of culture shift that we've been engaged in, and that honestly we have been driving, and I take, you know, as a member of the government, I take responsibility for that. We want to see the region thrive. We want to help the members of Ajax Pickering Board of Trade to prosper along with all the other businesses in Ontario. Um, and, you know, we really believe a rising tide lift all, lifts all the boats. So a prosperous Ontario means a better standard of living for all of us. We're all connected. So this is our next step in supporting Durham. We've already made significant investments in the region. The University of uh, Ontario Institute of Technology is drawing students from across Canada. It's a terrific institution. The new Regional Cancer Centre and the new Durham Courthouse have uh, revitalized parts of Durham. Work on the 407 East is proceeding with the uh, relocation of key utilities and the acquisition of property along the corridor. And in addition, we've started construction on uh, a bridge for the Highway 407, Highway 7 crossover in Whitby. At the same time, we are continuing as a government, and this was something that came up during the election campaign, we're continuing to remove burdens from local ratepayers. We're supporting local communities across Ontario by standing firmly behind our commitment to municipalities to upload costs that were placed on them previously. So we are continuing that upload, which gives municipalities more room to deliver the services that they want. It frees up funds for infrastructure, economic development, and other local priorities. And we stood by that commitment. And even though, I will tell you, we are having very difficult and challenging budget discussions right now, as you're well aware, we are remaining uh, steadfast behind that commitment to continue to upload those costs. In addition, the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund is that responsive fund to, that helps with local circumstances and helps municipalities with, for example, high social program costs or high policing costs. In two, uh, 2012, the provincial uploads and the supports um, from the OMPF will, uh, will total $44 million in the Durham region. So those are, those are important commitments that we have made and we are uh, determined to follow through on those. 
Another provincial action taken, sorry, I'm sorry, as a cousin standing too close or too far, I'm not sure. Too excited. No, I'm not too excited. <laughs> I'm excited to be here, but I'm trying to just not get too close. It's just a funny mic, okay. Um, another uh, provincial action taken recently to uh, benefit Durham is the regulation that we filed that authorizes Durham to start the processes necessary to have a directly elected regional chair. This is something that was requested by Durham Regional Council in a resolution and uh, that was sent to the government. I fulfilled that request. And I I'm going to apologize for the timing. Um, I apologize that there had to be a, that there was a story in the paper. I was literally in the process of signing the, uh, the document before it got reported that, you know, I hadn't followed through and I hadn't heard anything. So um, I'm afraid that being shifted into two ministries because now I, I'm holding two portfolios, it, um, it sat on the desk longer than I wanted it to, and I certainly will attempt not to, uh, not to have situations like that arise again. Um, so that is, uh, that's a request that we've uh, been able to fulfill. Um, there are a couple of other things that I just want to tell you about. They're a bit, uh, a bit more um, uh, um, mundane, but I want to let you know there's another government initiative called the Interministry, Inter Interministry Community Development Initiative. Um, the province is uh, providing services to local communities to help with economic readiness, and this is uh, this is an opportunity for business stakeholders not to have to wade into a whole mass of websites and different ministries' information um, to find out what government services are available. So we've, um, if you go to our ministry's website, you'll be able to find a home page with a new guide that will be a sort of uh, one stop. So, um, so that is, uh, that's something that we've put in place. Um, we're also trying to um, make sure that communities get faster targeted access to the right people. Um, and not only just the information, but to actually make those connections. So we've created what we call provincial economic transformation teams. And these teams collaborate directly with stakeholders um, in order to set priorities, establish strategies, and leverage resources when you're working on a community economic development project. So it's a new way of working with communities. It's, uh, it's one that provides a one-table approach, as I said, instead of having to go to a, a whole bunch of different places to get everything in one, uh, in one place. And what would be great is if an organization like this could give us feedback to see if making those changes actually makes any difference because um, you're the folks that we want to serve. Um, so those are, the, those are the specifics that I wanted to talk to you about. I want to conclude by saying that I think we share a common goal. And I know I, I was being flipped when I came in, and Roger, I didn't mean to be to do that. But I, I know that there are people who probably have bones to pick with me tonight and would like to, uh, would like to um, do that. There also are people probably in this room who, who think that we're on the right track and are quite happy with the direction we're going. That's the nature of the political endeavor. That's the reality of a democratic process. We're going to agree on things. We're, going to, we're going, to going to disagree on things. But anyone who has worked with me knows that I am open to conversation, that I am interested in hearing from people. I, I'm not afraid of a diversity of opinions. And I really think that the best way that we solve problems is by putting everyone in a room and finding a way to come to a conclusion. So thank you so much for having me here tonight. I'm sorry I had to arrive so late. Um, I want to uh, continue to work with Durham to show the, how the, show the rest of North America how it's done. So thank you very much. Thanks.